So firstly, instead of uh, driving, no. Yes. We go again. <laughs> this is what rallying has done to me, is my brain fried. So instead of you looking at me sitting down at the desk, I decided we'll go for a drive and get a coffee because, you know, that's what you get up to anyway. So, long story short, the rally is over. The modern rally was what, a week ago. So I wanted to give myself time to digest and I suppose look at the whole thing from a different perspective. And I keep going back to the same thing. It was the best experience that I've ever, ever, ever came across in my life. Nothing has came close to it. I've done loads of different motorsports and everything, but rallying was always my thing. And this really cemented that idea. Of course, rallying is very expensive, but only for my partners, bro, Kelly Care, Care I'm going to car sales, and everyone else who supported me, uh, it wouldn't be possible. And just nothing will ever come close. So long story short, we did plan on getting some footage from testing, which we do have, but unfortunately, because the car came up from Europe very late, by the time the guys got it in Sea Sport and Galway and get it prepped for tarmac, we had like 12 hours notice. So unfortunately, James doesn't work, so you have to put up with my footage. But we headed to Tina Carton Centre, the only track in Ireland I was never at before, which of course is always typical. So car arrived and uh, when he opened the shuttle in the back for the, I guess, send the picture of the James, it was one of these moments where you're like, I, I'm watching everyone else doing this all the time on YouTube and you know yourself, if you're into something you're researching and it was my turn and that I'll never ever forget. So the car came off the trailer and sat into it and got to seat position, the steering wheel and all the buttons. So basically, the t testing the rally car on the track was never going to be like a rally stage but it was just to get myself and James my navigator where the buttons are how to start that thing itself uh, all because of the sequential gearbox so all these new things to get used of and left hand drive and the first thing I did was get into the car on the right hand side so it was going to be challenging from, the, from that time on but um, no I have to say I really took to the car it's a really nice car to drive it's a really it, it gives you probably too much confidence, but uh, I loved it. The brakes is the best thing for me anyway. I just think they're phenomenal. But a uh, test was done, and then next was to get the car home to County Monaghan. So from Goba to Monaghan, Danny left in the truck, and then uh, in fairness to the guys at CBM, only for them, they drove down from Edward County, met me in the garage, wrapped the car, loaded the car that evening, and then next morning, myself and James on the recce for the rally, which it, 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 again, that was a new learning experience. I never done a recce before, so learning your notes and uh, I suppose thinking ahead of the whole thing, but the test did help because I knew how the car was gonna react if you get me. But anyway, done the recce, then through scrutiny, and then all of a sudden, just like that, the day went in five minutes, it's right there. And uh, to be honest with you, I was nervous, I was excited, I was every emotion you could think of. I was trying to stay, especially during recce, it was such a buzz but it was so hard not to become over too excited because then you lose your confidence so I was the only depressing myself in the recce morning if you get me just to keep make sure I didn't make any mistakes and miss anything that because you know yourself first rally you don't want to be uh, putting it off and especially on, on TikTok and stuff people knows you're doing it so you don't want to make a fool of yourself so thank god that didn't happen but um, yeah massive learning experience and uh, it's definitely not my last time in rally car I can guarantee you that so I did put up a, a TikTok video asking you if you have any questions, let me know. So here are some of them. The first one that came up an awful lot was why was the car on an Estonian reg plate? Well, that's where the car was bought and that's where the car was rallied, hence the Estonian French pl uh, the plate. If you bought a Peugeot uh, from brand new, it would have came on the French plates, but because this car was rallied in Estonia, same as the Toyota WRCs, that's the plate that's on it and I quite like that. Another question that popped up an awful lot is left-hand drive. Why is it left-hand drive? So unlike like a Mark II Escort or a Honda Civic, the Peugeot 208 is categorized as an R2. So it's a fully homologated factory built car to uh, specifications. So basically, you can rally that car anywhere in the world and the competition is equal. That's the whole idea of it. So left hand drive because they're mainly rallied across the world and mainland Europe. So it makes more sense. But of course for us paddies, we drive on the right hand side of the road, or the left hand side, but right hand drive. So realistically, I probably should have got a left-hand drive recce car, but with time and everything, I didn't get a chance to. And that would have made a huge difference because the first time I drove a left-hand drive car uh, on the public road was the morning after the rally heading out to the first stage. So yeah, that's a, a very steep learning curve. And if you'd probably seen from the onboards, Manon was a very, very committed technical rally. The stages was littered with gravel. So you had to know where the car was placed to stay in the line or else it was it was bye bye and game over and punctures and everything else so steep learning curve but guess what after a while you get into it and you actually forget about it so 
wasn't too bad. Another question was the price. Everyone loves to know the price, and so do I. I don't want to know it now. But anyway, regardless, the weekend, I'm not going to do the breakdown because that's not fair on the on the, on the the guys I hired the car from and everything else. But in long, the entry, the car itself, uh, and everything that went around it, probably, well, it didn't probably, it's around seven and a half grand. That's what it cost me for one day's rally. And unfortunately, two of the stages was cancelled. Again, no fault of the motor club. That's rally, as I say. But, um, yeah, so a lot of money. So I think if I was going rallying again, I'd have to buy a car. Another question that I got a couple of times was, what happened to my front bumper? Well, it was never really, it was always going to happen, being left-hand drive. So in rallying, you have a thing called a chicane. And that is basically hay bales that is placed on a fast piece of road to slow the cars down and it can be a three or four bill. So basically you slow down and you drive around them, a bit like a slalom, and then you go back up to speed. But as I said, these are generally on very fast parts of the road, so it was actually, which was very annoying, on my last stage, I never put a mark on the car the whole day, and just coming into a really, really bumpy section, uh, I just, for that split second, that's all it took, I just forgot that I was a left-hand drive, and I just didn't keep far enough on the, on the left-hand side of the road, and I just touched the bill, I mean touched it, and uh, plastic bumper, little bit of the bumper come off. Other than that, no damage. So very, very lucky. But um, yeah, that's what happened to the bumper. So it looked worse than it did. It was only this much, but when the car was wrapped, it looked so good. And when a little bit of it comes off, it just ruins the look. But yeah, that's what happened to that. Nothing serious. And uh, that's rallying. You have to, you know, these cars are rally cars. They're made for action. And uh, that's the way to keep them. Another question I've received an awful lot, and which is I love to see, it's people whose brand spanking new rallying doesn't know what rallying is. To think we're all stone mad, but you have no Google Maps, so how do you actually go around the stages? So your navigator, the brave person I sits with you, and um, they read called Pace Notes, and a huge shout out to On the Pace Notes by Killian Duffy. He supplied me with the notes, and uh, so long story short, it's like a, a new language. So it's a number system with a descriptive term after it. So for example. In front of us here, we have a straight road. The distance of that could be 200, so that's 200 meters. And then after that, you can, you can describe the corner. So for me, it goes from one to six. One is basically, it's a very, very tight, it's, it's not a square left, but it's the next best thing to a square left. And six is completely flat. If you see it, you don't lift. It's as simple as that. So you go from one to six, and that is basically the variety uh, of the corner. And then after that, you have more descriptive terms. So it could be six left over crest. So that's a flat six over a crest. So basically you can see around the corner, but you're calling the flat. And you have to trust your navigator that yes, this is a six flat and you're on the wrong side of the road. It's, it's you know, nothing comes to it. You're going up this narrow road and you have no idea the road in front of you and then you're just trusting it. The feeling, I'm telling you, it's hard to do a track day after it. Uh, all, you have crest, which is that. Obviously you have jumps, you have bumps, you have nips, which is a term used in the corner. So if that's if the corner tightens, um, a slot, so a square right basically is a complete 90 degree angle or square right and what I like to use in that is a, a slot square left so that is basically if you're coming down a road and in front of you there's a, you have a, a junction but in front of you there's a runoff so the slot is basically I can push on the brakes and if it doesn't have the slot I cannot push on the brakes so if you go off you're going to hit a wall so it's little things like that but it's a completely new language but I think I'm going to do a full video on that because it is so interesting um, it's like a new word. So, in short, that is what pace notes is. Another question again that came up yet again an awful lot. Well, well, why did I pick the class I went to? Realistically, if I wanted to, I could probably pick an easier class, if just such a thing, uh, if you wanted to get results. The R2 class is basically, it's like the R5s, but just down a couple of notches. The pace is incredible. And it is a real credit to every single person who takes part in the rally, the times, like there's guys finishing in the top 10, 15, 20 of international rallies in a front wheel drive R2 car. And even the weekend in Killarney, a couple of the top guys was beaten R5 cars. This is 200,000 euro cars being bet by Ford Fiestas, Peugeots, the smaller cars. So they're, they are, it's, it's giant killing material. So I am never gonna be at that pace for any time soon. It's all about seat time, it's about getting this this arse of mine in the seat as often as I can. And that's what it comes down to. And it's so different compared to everything else because you have so many things going on. So for instance, you have your pace note, you have the speed, you have tires, you have weather conditions, you have gravel, you have jumps. It's not like going around Mandelo, for example, where you know where everything is. It changes the whole time. It varies so much. But uh, for me anyway, I say to myself, if I can get into an R2, if I was going to buy one, 
I'd rather spend 60, 70, 80 grand on an R2 rally car for the simple reason, if I wanted to sell it tomorrow, I could sell it anywhere else in the world. I'm not just relying on the Irish market. The cars are developed, you can buy parts for them, um, they're easier to run, and for me, I just think if you can get competitive in an R2, you could drive anything pretty quick. So that's the whole idea behind it. If you think of Formula 1, you look at a friend of mine, Keen Kerry. He's currently racing a Formula 3, so that's like a stepping stone to Formula 1. Like this is exactly, uh, my R2 car is like his Formula 3 car. It's all a stepping stone to the big level. So for me, it made more sense. And to be honest with you, the front wheel drive, and you really have to drive them like a go-kart. They are so much fun. That's why I got it, and to be honest with you, that's the class I uh, I think I'm gonna stick to. And I, I really wanted to add this to this video. Um, just want to say a massive thank you to the entire motorsport community, the rallying community. I wasn't expecting the amount of feedback I got and people text me and well wishes, even in the morning of the rally, other competitors and stuff. And it's, uh, you know, it was, it was a really humbling sort of experience. It was unbelievable. And, you know, you see, you're walking around <clears throat> the likes of Pat Fairman and stuff with these guys you're looking up to since you're whatever age and, you know, you're finally getting to do it in, in, a, in a proper car. So for me, it was genuinely, it's a bucket list item ticked off. And, you know, I was luckily getting an entry for money because it was my first rally and the entry list was incredible with some top tier names on the reserve list. So for that, I'm very, very grateful and it got me on the ladder. Um, but again, coming back to the whole thing, I was, I, I sort of done this whole thing for me. Uh, rallying, as I keep saying, is my thing. And that is my bread and butter. That is what I live for. I love it the bit. So if, even if the figures wasn't that good, I, I would still end up doing rallying because that's what I wanted to do. But I was so happy to see the genuine feedback, especially in the comments of people um, with well wishes on how I'd done the weekend and genuine interest, like over the weekend alone. Like this is like a week after rally, but or just after rally finished, I checked with 3.8 million views just on TikTok, on pure rally content, nothing else. And the engagement, like the comments alone on percentage wise was up like two and a half thousand percent. So that goes to show rallying in Ireland is massive. And not only that, the amount of people that travelled from Galway and Cork who follows me on TikTok never was at a rally before, but they came up to support it, uh, came up to the car, said hello, they waited, you know, it's it's I couldn't get over it. And uh, for that I just have to say a huge thank you. So definitely for sure I it's it, I think there's a real niche in this market that we can do and I was so happy because it was great for the likes of Barrow Healthcare and the guys who came on board. We can give them huge exposure um, and like everything else, that's what it's all about. If you, keep, if you keep your partners happy, I'm happy, the man behind the camera's happy, <laughs> it's a win-win and you get to do what you want to do. So yeah, all I can say is just thank you so much to everyone for making this happen. I thought I started this whole social media journey by mistake a year ago and uh, we're up to what, over 150,000 followers on TikTok and millions of views and all that, it's crazy. And here we are now rallying, so. That's drifting, rally cross, rallying, JDM stuff, well as we have the Bumblebee supercar yeah. stuff. So we have everything on the channel, but there's only one that really, really uh, hits home with me and that's rallying, so. Again, just genuinely from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for following this journey. Uh, all I can say is, <coughs> This is definitely only the start. There's a lot going on behind the scenes. And uh, someone told me that uh, there's some event that takes place in June, somewhere in Donegal. So all I can say is, I hope to see you there. So for myself, from James, and from everybody who's a part of this entire process, thank you very much. Until next time, Sloan.